Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you've ever experienced a power outage, you know how frustrating it can be to lose electricity for even a few hours. Now imagine being without power for a few days. That's when having a backup generator becomes really important. But choosing the right generator for your home can be confusing with so many options out there. Should you get a petrol generator, a diesel generator, or maybe even a solar battery system? Well, in today's video, we'll break down everything you need to know to make the best choice for your home. Let's get started. Let's start with the basics. The most common types of portable generators are petrol and diesel generators. While both will keep your home powered during an outage, they have some key differences you should know about. First, let's talk fuel availability. Petrol is the most common fuel type, so it's usually easy to find at any gas station. It's also cheaper up front, which is why petrol generators are typically more affordable to buy. But petrol prices can fluctuate, and over time, it might end up costing you more in fuel, especially if you're running your generator for extended periods. On the other hand, diesel generators are known for their fuel efficiency. Diesel tends to be more stable in price, and diesel generators can run longer on the same amount of fuel compared to petrol. However, they are generally more expensive to buy up front. Then there's the issue of engine longevity. Petrol engines are great for light, occasional use. They're fine if you just need a generator for short outages once in a while, but if you expect to use your generator more frequently or for longer periods, diesel generators are more durable. Diesel engines tend to last longer and require less maintenance over time. Now, let's talk about noise and emissions. Petrol generators tend to be quieter, but they also produce more emissions. Diesel generators are typically louder, though many newer models have reduced noise levels. Diesel also produces fewer harmful emissions, which is something to consider if you'll be running the generator a lot. Finally, there's the cost. Petrol generators are cheaper to buy up front, making them a good option if you're on a budget. Diesel generators cost more up front, but their lower fuel consumption can save you money in the long run. But what if you're thinking about something cleaner and quieter? That's where a solar battery system comes in. A solar system with a lithium battery bank and a 3000 watt inverter can be a good substitute for a traditional generator. But there are some pros and cons to consider. Pros. First, it's quiet. Unlike petrol or diesel generators, a battery system doesn't make any noise while it's running. Plus, you're using solar panels to recharge your battery, which means you're generating power from a renewable energy source. That's a huge benefit if you're looking to reduce your carbon footprint and cut down on fuel costs. Another advantage is that solar battery systems require less maintenance. There are fewer moving parts, so you won't have to worry about oil changes, spark plugs, or fuel storage like you would with a generator. However, the initial cost of a solar battery system is higher than a portable generator. You'll need to invest in solar panels, batteries, and an inverter, which can add up quickly. Also, a 3000 watt inverter may not be powerful enough to run larger household appliances, especially if you're trying to power something like an air conditioner. Another thing to consider is that solar panels rely on the sun, so if you're in an area that gets a lot of cloudy weather, or you're facing a long outage, you might run out of stored energy. You'd need to have enough battery capacity to last through those periods. Let's talk about what kind of power you'll actually need to keep your home running during an outage. Every appliance in your home uses a certain amount of watts. So, to choose the right generator or battery system, you'll need to calculate the total wattage of everything you want to power. For example, your fridge will typically use around 600 to 800 watts. However, it can have a startup surge of 1,200 to 2,000 watts when the compressor kicks in. Then you've got your TV, which might use around 100 to 200 watts. Your computer and internet router could pull another 150 to 300 watts. If you're just powering these essential items, you can probably get by with a 2,000 to 3,000 watt generator or inverter. But what if you want to power more? Let's say you want to run an air conditioner. A small air conditioning unit could require 2,000 to 4,000 watts just to run, with an even higher startup surge. 
adding that in means you'll need a larger generator, something in the 5,000 watt range or higher. Now, let's talk about another important topic, connecting your generator directly to your home's electrical system. This is usually done using a transfer switch. A transfer switch safely connects your generator to your home's wiring, allowing you to power essential circuits like your fridge, lights and outlets without running extension cords all over the place. The big benefit here is convenience. When your generator is hooked up to your electrical system, it powers your circuits just like your utility power does. Some systems even have an automatic transfer switch, so if the power goes out, the generator kicks on automatically without you having to do anything. But there are some potential issues. First, you need to make sure your generator is powerful enough to handle the load. If you try to power too many circuits, you could overload the generator. And most importantly, you need to install the transfer switch properly to avoid something called backfeeding, which can be dangerous for utility workers trying to restore power during an outage. Always make sure you get a licensed electrician to install your transfer switch to avoid any safety issues. One last thing I want to mention is that not all generators are created equal when it comes to powering sensitive electronics like your smartphone, tablet or computer. Many modern devices require a clean, stable power supply, which is why pure sine wave inverters and generators are recommended. A pure sine wave generator produces electricity that's consistent and smooth, similar to what you get from the grid. This is important because using a generator with a modified sine wave can cause overheating or even damage to your devices over time. If you're planning to power things like iPhones, iPads, laptops or other sensitive electronics, it's best to invest in a pure sine wave inverter generator. These are designed to provide clean power, keeping your electronics safe from potential harm. So, to sum it up, when choosing the right generator or battery system for your home, it all depends on your specific needs and budget. If you're looking for something affordable and easy to maintain, a petrol generator might be your best bet. If you need longer runtime and durability, a diesel generator is worth the investment. And if you're after a quieter, cleaner solution, a solar battery system could be the right choice. Make sure to consider how much power you need for your home's essential appliances and always prioritize safety by using transfer switches when connecting to your electrical system. And if you're running sensitive electronics, look for a pure sine wave generator to protect them. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more home improvement and emergency preparedness tips. Let me know in the comments what kind of generator you're thinking of getting or if you already have one that's worked well for you. See you in the next video.